I am so excited to be here today at .NET 2021 to talk about the future of application development with .NET. Here's a couple of the sponsors for .NET 2021. And now, a little bit about me. First off, I am so excited to be here. I wish I could be there in person, and I hope to be back next year in person, but I am still super excited to be there virtually to tell you about all the new stuff coming in .NET 6. So I'm Scott. I joined Microsoft back in 2007, the ASP.NET team. Back then we were building web forms, MVC, web API, SignalR. We were thinking about how to open source that technology. And then something happened. In 2021, um, we got moved to the Azure team. Scott Guthrie, who we worked for, he moved there to take on Azure. And with him, we came as well. Now, what was cool about this is it meant we got a chance to go make sure that, that .NET worked amazing in Azure. Great platform for building apps in Azure. We built great tooling uh, in the Visual Studio family uh, for publishing your apps to Azure, for debugging them in Azure, uh, for looking at the logs of them in Azure, all of those types of things. Uh, so it made .NET early in the cloud game. But also something else happened. As we were in Azure, we were looking at all the other web stacks that are out there, and they were all open source and cross-platform. You could do them from command line with no tools. Um, and so we started a project that we called ASP.NET 5 that let you do the same thing with .NET. Um, it became called .NET Core. And then in 2016, um, I moved into the Visual Studio, to Visual Studio team, DevDiv, uh, to actually unify all the .NETs back together into a single unified platform and it's now built .NET 5 and the, and the apps that you use today. So .NET, I mentioned before, we started this in 2002. Well, back then, we were primarily Windows focused on desktop and web. Um, but as I mentioned, then I moved to the, the Azure team, my team moved to the Azure team, and uh, we started thinking about the cloud and making sure .NET weren't, ran great in the cloud. Then in 2016, we did something else amazing. Uh, we hired this company, or we, we bought this company called Xamarin, and they built libraries for building .NET applications for iOS and Android. This gave .NET access to mobile. Um, and then, have you ever played a game and it said powered by Unity? Well, if you play one of those games, realize that game is actually written in .NET. Kind of cool. Um, at the same time, as part of this journey of ASP.NET 5 to .NET Core, we added new architectures, ARM32, ARM64. This enables .NET now to run IoT right on the edge on small devices like Raspberry Pis. Um, and then we found a library inside of Microsoft that was used to, do, to power things like Windows Hello, which you open your laptop and it, lo it logs you in based on your face. Um, and we took that library and we open sourced it and we made it available as part of .NET. Um, so it's part of the platform now too. It means you can do all these things with this one top level framework, .NET. Now, how are we doing? I mentioned a couple times, we've been around since 2002, we're doing great. Um, if you just look at the Visual Studio family of tools, every month there's more than 5 million developers using .NET in those tools. If I look at the Stack Overflow, you know, one of the most popular places to ask developer type questions, we've been the number one most loved framework for two years in a row, 2019 and 2020. Um, and then top 30, this is, this is, this is a crazy number here. Um, we open source.net super late. It was 2014. Even though we're that late, we are one of the highest velocity projects on GitHub. The Cloud Data Foundation, an independent company or org, they actually measure the, the fastest velocity projects, looking at the number of PRs, the number of issues, the number of comments and stuff like that. And .NET's not only in the top 30, it's actually number one. Pretty amazing for something that was open source so late. Um, we're also the top five language in GitHub. Um, and performance, the greater than 10 times Node.js performance. This is super important. When we reimagined .NET, we had to ask ourselves, well, why would you use .NET over Java or Go or Python or anything else? And we decided to focus on performance. We want to make sure that if you built an app in .NET, it was the fastest it could be. This means it's going to save you money when you host it in the cloud. Uh, it means you're going to get the best performance uh, using our platform. And so that's, it's part of the DNA of our team now. And then we also, we survey. We ask people they'll take a survey when they install .NET for the first time, and we say, who are you? Um, and amazingly enough, over 40% of those people say they're students. 
and I hope this brings a brand new generation of programmers to .NET. Now performance, let's talk a little bit more about that. How do we measure this? This is measured by something called the Tech Empower Benchmark. This is an independent org that has an open source benchmark, uh, and they run it every couple months, um, and it crosses things like plain text, which is just raw performance, JSON, data. It's got a composite score when you add all those together. Um, where are we? Well, we are in the top of that, tr of, the, of, the, of that benchmark in the composite score, meaning generally across all of it, uh, we're, we're one of the fastest frameworks. We're in the top, top 10. Um, gRPC, this is some exciting tech we shipped in .NET Core 3.0. It's a RPC tech, very similar to WCF, Windows Communication Foundation, except unlike WCF, which is more .NET, gRPC is totally cross-platform. You can build a server in Java and call it from .NET. You can build a server in .NET, call it from Java. And so we think this is important for .NET because you can now build services that work everywhere uh, on all devices, all operating systems, all technologies. Now, how are we there? We're freaking fast there too. Um, if you look here, we are faster than Java, faster than C++, faster than Go. Um, this is also an independent benchmark. We don't run it ourselves. Um, we think we might be faster than Rust as well, but this was run on a pre-production pre pre version of .NET 5 at the time. And so just our commitment to performance. It's, it's part of what makes .NET .NET. Now let's talk about adoption. This is something that's super important to me. If I go back and look at the history of .NET, um, we had .NET framework, it took customers two or three years to move to the next version, which meant it, you know, as we built new features, it took people years to be able to use those features. One of the goals of .NET Core and .NET 5 was to solve that. And we solved that by making it side by side. You can now install multiple copies of .NET on the same, same computer and they will not interfere with each other, which means if your developers want to build the next app using the latest .NET, .NET 5, they can put .NET 5 on a server and it will not break any of the .NET Core 3.1 applications at all. Um, and so because of this, we're seeing developers move to the newer version of .NET faster and faster than ever before. You can see here, three million people in the first six months of shipping .NET Core 3.1 moved to it and tried it and used it. I'm happy to say that .NET 5, even faster. In the first six months uh, since we shipped .NET 5, over 3.6 million people have come and started using .NET 5. And so we think it's because we're adding great capabilities and performance that people want to stay on the, on the latest version. I want you to be on the latest version. Now, what's .NET 5? You saw on that slide a bunch of things moved together. We used to have .NET Framework, .NET Core, and, and Xamarin. We want to move all those together um, into a single unified platform that we're now calling um, .NET 5. And the goal of this is flexible deployment. I just mentioned that before. You can easily um, you know, put .NET on a machine and not risk breaking other applications. You can even copy it in your application itself if you want. Unparalleled performance, it's gonna be awesome when it comes to cloud performance and costs. And then of course, .NET 5 is where we're actually innovating now. Um, you know, .NET framework is hard for us to innovate in without breaking anything. And so all the new features of APIs and languages are going to show up here. So get on .NET 5 uh, and beyond. Now, how do you get on .NET 5? We have tons of customers that are still on .NET Framework. And by the way, .NET Framework is supported today and it will be supported as long as we ship Windows. So there's no rush to move off of it, but we still have lots of customers ask, what's the easiest way to move to the newest version of .NET? Well, I'm happy to announce that we now have what we call the .NET Upgrade Assistant. This is a command line tool you can install and it will help you convert your projects. We built this because we get asked this question a ton. Uh, there's teams inside of Microsoft that have moved huge services to .NET Core and .NET 5 uh, to save costs. Uh, they needed help. This tool can do that. We've also helped plenty of our external customers move. And so after working on this internally for a bit, we wanted to share it with all of you to help you move your applications as well. Today, it's primarily optimized for moving a WinForm, a WPF, an MVC, or a Web API project, but we're looking to do more in the future. And what it will basically do is you uh, install the tool, you go to the folder of your application, you run it, um, it will then ask you if you want to make a backup, it'll back up your solution if you want, um, and then what it will do is it'll go and 
convert your project files to the new style projects we have in .NET 5. It'll then go and retarget your application to use .NET 5. It'll then go fix the NuGet references that you have or other references that you have to make sure they, ma they match the right versions of those things in .NET 5. Um, and it can even provide a few code fix-ups as well. Um, so it's not going to guarantee to make your application run, but it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and make it much easier to port your application. And I, you know, I recommend grabbing it, trying it, give us some feedback, let us know if there's other parts of .NET you want us to help you convert, uh, and we will in the future. And now I can do a demo of the Upgrade Assistant. Now, 1.NET. This has been something that I've been talking about for years. I know Scott Hanselman's been talking about for years as well. We used to, call, we used to have a thing called 1ASP.NET. And 1ASP.NET was you could, you, you could always build all, all ASP.NET from one final new experience. Um, I could build an, a web form application and add MVC or add a web API or add a signal R. Well, we want to do that with the entire platform now. Um, the idea here is, no matter any of those app types I showed earlier, whether it's desktop, web, mobile, IoT, machine learning, um, you can build all of those with a single SDK. You install the .NET SDK, and from that you can build all those project types. One BCL, what does that actually mean, Scott? Well, today we have three BCLs. BCL stands for Base Class Libraries. These are all the regular APIs you use in .NET every day, whether it's a date time, whether it's opening a file, whether it's a string, um, all these things that are built into .NET, we have three implementations. We have the .NET Framework version, a .NET Core version, and the one that came from Mono. Well, we're making all the project types use the same one that's based on the core BCL. Um, then we want to have um, a unified tool chain. What does that mean? That means the same .NET uh, run, .NET build, .NET restore uh, that you can do from the command line works across all the project types. And then there's, we want to have amazing cross-platform native UI. So what does this mean? Well, I think people have been asking for years, I want to build an app and make sure it can run on iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. And you can now do that. We also want to have great cross-platform web. Well, web's already cross-platform, but we want to take it to the next level and let you actually build web apps inside of desktop apps or native apps. And then of course, cloud native, we all heard of containers, Kubernetes, microservices. We've been doing tons of work in .NET to make those work amazing on the platform. And then performance, we're always gonna get faster every version to version. And I think once we finish this .NET 6 journey, we will be the best kind of overall framework for building all these app types uh, compared to any other framework around. And so that's our vision with .NET 6, which we hope to ship this, well, hope to ship, which we will ship this November. Um, so what are some of the main features that we have in, in, in here? Um, so one of the things is we want to simplify the way that you build apps with C Sharp. Uh, we introduced some of these things in .NET 5 with top-level programs, which means you can get rid of the program.cs, or you can get rid of the program class and the main inside of that. You can just write code and, and get right there. We want to have .NET multi-platform app UI. Yeah, that's a mouthful. We actually call it .NET MAUI. That's the tech that lets you actually you know, build um, uh, apps for all the devices with .NET. Um, Blazor Desktop, or actually .NET MAUI Desktop. This lets you build a native application, but you can instead host web inside of it. Um, you might know that you've been doing this already if you use Microsoft Teams or you use Visual Studio Code. These are actually web apps uh, running inside of a desktop frame. We're going to let you do the same thing in .NET. Minimal web APIs. If you compare .NET to Node.js Express or some of the Python Flask, well, it, it looks more complicated. Well, it only looks more complicated because we started off building the enterprise level of apps or APIs. We want to let you build these small microservice APIs. You can now do it in a single file. Um, and so we've got other things too. ARM support uh, for WinForms and WPF on Windows. We have support for the Apple M1 chip. Um, probably my favorite one, it's too far low on this list, hot reload. Um, there's a term at Microsoft, we call it the inner loop. This is how long it takes you to 
write some code, run it, see, if the, see the result, go back and change your code again, run it again. How long does that take? We want to make that be instantaneous, and Hot Reload's going to do that. Um, and of course, more perf. This is an amazing number for me too as well. Entity Framework Core. So this is our data ORM, object relational mapper that we have inside of .NET. It's the, the main API we have for building uh, data, data related apps in .NET. Um, I've mentioned performance a lot of times. Take a look at this. 70% faster um, year over year in EF Core. It's so fast now that uh, one of the smallest or fastest micro ORMs called Dapper that the Stack Exchange uh, people behind uh, Stack Overflow build, um, now EF Core is almost equivalent in performance. Even though it has a lot more features and capabilities, it's almost there with the same performance. You can see the query performance is much faster, and even more, more importantly, the memory usage is faster, is, is, is lower. This all adds up to better performance. And this is our commitment when .NET, is to keep making performance a key part of this. And so it means your data access is just going to get better uh, with .NET 6. Simplify your code with C Sharp 10. So um, look at the top line here, global using. What, is that, what does that do? Well, most of our .NET applications all start with a whole bunch of lines of using, using, usings. Well, if you're putting the same ones in every single file, maybe we can make them global so you don't have to do that anymore. Global usings let you do that. Um, this is showing an example of a record. It's a faster, simpler way of writing a class. Um, we've done a bunch of work to make writing lambdas not require some of the typecasting we did before. So there's lots of work we're doing to make it where your C Sharp is more concise, cleaner than it ever has been before. And that'll be in C Sharp 10. Minimal web APIs. So if you built an API with, with ASP.NET Web API, you might be like, I've got a program.cs, I've got a startup.cs, I've got a controller folder, a controller. This app right here, this is an entire application that can return a request in three lines of code. Um, so this is lightweight, single file, get right to it. Um, this is using lots of our new tech, top level programs and stuff to get rid of all that ceremony that you normally see in, a, in an application. Um, and if you want to, you can always move this, the same API right back to MVC, and you might want to do that. If you have a lot of APIs, putting them in a single file is probably not a good idea. Um, and of course, all of this is going to be generally available in .NET 6. So next, what I want to do is I want to do a demo of minimal web APIs. And I do want to apologize. I'm going to play a video instead of actually doing it live. And that's because as we did the build conference a few weeks ago, um, none of our tools we're all, this stuff is so pre-release that none of the tools actually work all the way yet. Um, we're just a week or so away from actually having the tools available to you so you can try all these new features from the Visual Studio family of tools. So for that, I'm going to play a video and we can watch minimal web APIs. I am super excited to show you ASP.NET minimal APIs. We first introduced web APIs in .NET back in 2012 with the Web API project built on top of MVC, which uses controllers, routing, attributes, conventions, dependency injection, and more to let you build enterprise class APIs on .NET. And we've carried all that technology forward to .NET 6. But we see a new trend around lightweight APIs and small microservices, and some new frameworks like Express and Node, Lumen and PHP, Fast API and Python make these super easy to build minimal APIs. We want to enable you to build the same lightweight APIs using the same ASP.NET that you know and trust with less configuration and a path to upgrade to controller APIs if needed. To do this, we're using a bunch of new technologies. Look at this application. Using top-level programs, there is no class or main. It's just code. Using a Lambda, I can write the function in line next to my route. And if I run this, you can see that my three-line application can return Hello World to the browser. We think these new lightweight APIs are going to make it easier for you to build microservices. We think it's going to be, be, make it easier for new people to learn and build their first APIs in .NET. So I'm super excited about this. But I want to take this to the next level and show you a real API. So let me go back to Visual Studio.
Here we are back in Visual Studio, and in this case, I've got three API projects. My minimal web, web API project hosted in Azure uh, that powers the rest of the demos you'll see today. I've got my MVC web API project here as well, and I've got an Express application written in Node. Let's start off with the MVC web API, and you're gonna see it's got a bunch of files, startup.cs, program.cs, and it's got its weathercontroller.cs. Let's dive into the weather controller and you're going to see these APIs are based on classes that then have uh, methods with attributes on them. Great for building lots of APIs. But if I just want to build one API, I can go look at something like the Express application here and look, it's very concise, down to 37 lines of code uh, to build a single API. It gets right to the point. Now, if we move over to the new ASP.NET minimal API, you're going to see it's even smaller and more concise than the Express application, 30 lines of code. And this is because we're using new features like top level programs, global using and lambdas to really reduce the amount of ceremony you have to do to write a single API. This kind of technology is great for building microservices and simple APIs. Now, as I looked at this, I, uh, I wanted to compare all the technologies to each other. And so what I've got down here is I've got a notepad file and I've kind of kept a tally of how much code you have to write. So the MVC Web APIs, uh, that's really if you want to build a lot of APIs, uh, that requires about 138 lines of code to get started. The Node Express API uses 37 lines of code. And amazingly enough, you know, .NET uh, minimal APIs are only 30 lines of code. And this is just showing you we're applying these new technologies to make it faster and easier for you to build great apps. So here we are back in Visual Studio. And now what I want to do is run my app locally to make sure it works. Here we go. And you can see it's pulling the weather back. And so I've got a successful API using ASP.NET minimal APIs running. Now, the next thing I want to do is switch back to Visual Studio. Here we go. And what I want to do is I want to publish this application to Azure for the rest of the demos that you see today. So I'm going to click publish. We'll select Azure and we'll select App Service Linux. There we go. Let me create a new one. I'm gonna change my name just to Minimal Weather. Um, I've got a uh, hosting plan already set up for me. I will select that. Press Create here. There we go, it's creating my app service. Um, <clears throat> now I'm gonna click Next and I'm actually gonna deploy using GitHub Actions using CI CD and click Finish. What happens now is when I commit my app, um, it will do a CI CD flow to publish it. I can switch to my repo and you can see all the steps have happened to publish my app to Azure. And now I can actually go and open my browser tab here. And this shows the minimal API that we built running in Azure. And we will use this for the rest of the demos today. So that showed you how easy it was to build a minimal API and very few lines of code Get it hosted in Azure using GitHub Actions, and we're going to use that same API for the rest of the demos today. Now, super excited to talk about .NET multi-platform app UI, or as we like to say, .NET MAUI. Um, this is basically a, a UI stack for building native applications that run on all the platforms, Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. What's even cooler is they use the right technologies for each of those, those, those platforms. So on Windows, we're using WinUI. That's the latest platform for building UI apps on Windows. For Mac, we're using Mac Catalyst. That's the same technology that Apple's using to build some of their new apps on the Mac as well. And then, of course, on iOS and Android, we run right on the native thing there. And these are cross-platform native UI, right once, run everywhere. Um, another cool thing here is if you used Xamarin in the past, you had to have a project for each of the UIs that you built. In this case, we can now do a single project across all of them with a single code base for all your apps to run on all four of those platforms. Um, and then what you do is you right click in your application and you say deploy to iOS or deploy to Android or deploy to Windows or deploy to Mac and that'll produce the executable for you for those, those platforms. Um, this is gonna be available in .NET 6 um, and I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, the first time ever you can build a single application right once, run everywhere in .NET. Uh, you might ask me, Scott, is Linux gonna come? I don't know. Um, we, th we thought that uh, we barely have time to ship these four platforms in .NET 6. If you want Linux, let us know. We'll consider it. Um, and with that, I want to play a video 
that shows how to build .NET apps that run everywhere with .NET MAUI. .NET 6 brings consistent experiences from all project types to .NET MAUI, including the command line. In this case, we're going to create a new MAUI app with .NET New MAUI. Uh, we're going to name it Build MAUI. Now from here, I could run, if I wanted to, uh, .NET Restore, .NET Build, .NET Run, uh, but I want to show you how we can build an optimized experience for building cross-platform applications with Visual Studio. So let me launch Visual Studio here. .NET MAUI targets iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. And so what we're going to do here is take the single project here. We're going to set this to start a project here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go to the uh, debug menu here. And let me click that again, drop that down. And I'm select the framework that I want to run on. And I'm going to select Android here. And that means when I run the application, it's going to actually run the application on my Android emulator on the right here. So let's get this started. Um, one of our goals with .NET MAUI was to give you a single project for building all your applications. So you can focus more on your application and less on the specific targets uh, of your application. It all starts with the startup.cs file. This is very similar to what we do with ASP.NET today. Uh, this is where you configure all of the things for your application. Uh, in this case, we've set on, we want Xamarin Forms compatibility. We set our default application. We're gonna set our font right here. Um, and if I'm using third-party libraries, I would configure them here as well. Uh, maybe I'm going to use dependency injection. I want to share something across my application. I would put that here as well. Um, and so that's kind of the way we copy that experience from ASP.NET to over here. Now we all have these folders, Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, and we have the WinUI 3 uh, down here. Um, and this is where you write your platform specific code. We also have a resource folder. Inside of that, we put your fonts, your images, your app icon, your startup screen, all in one place. And so here the applica application is booting up. Uh, in my emulator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click the counter here and see it's at number five. And I'm going to show you a hot reload. I can actually change either my XAML or my C sharp and press save. And as soon as I do, the application updates immediately. This helps with your productivity quite a bit. Um, now, this is a semi simple application. Let's use a more complex example and show you how we can do platform specific light up with .NET MAUI. So here I am in Visual Studio with my weather application. And you're going to see that uh, as I run it here, it's a WinUI, native Windows application. Um, but I've done a few things differently here. If you look in my configure services, I've added some new services. I've added a tray icon uh, for putting a tray icon on Windows. I've added notifications for native notifications and a tray icon for Mac. Now, if I go and show my main page here, you can see I've, what I've done is set up app actions. This allows me to put a context menu when you right click on the app icon where you can put some menu items in here and make it do some other options. I've also added a tree icon too. Um, and so what happens here, if you click on the tree icon, we'll send a notification on the platform that you're on uh, with that data. So if I look here, I can right click here, my new context menu showing up right here in my applications is showing native UI hookup. Uh, here's my tree icon. I can click it um, and there you go. You can see as soon as I did that, um, a notification popped up in Windows. It's just showing how you can do these native light ups across all the platforms. Now, I can't just show you just Windows. Um, .NET MAUI is cross-platform. Let's go to, to my Mac and I'll show you a couple, other, a couple other options. Here you go. I've got my same UI and same code running on iOS, Mac OS, and Android. If I resize the Mac OS application, you see it resizes dynamically. Like you would expect, if I click the icon, you see those same menu items there that you saw before. And then if I click the icon at the very top, you'll get that notification directly on your Mac. So this is showing you how we could do this cross-platform light up, but still give you these native options uh, with .NET MAUI, all using the same UI. So that's pretty cool. You just saw how we built a single code base, had a native Windows application, and then showed you a native iOS, Android, and Mac application all at the same code base. But even more, more important there was we can also light up features on the specific platforms. You saw that on the Windows machine, we had a tray icon. We could do right-click context menus on the tray, uh, on the taskbar, uh, and we could do native notifications. The whole platform is available to you. You saw the same, same thing work on the Mac the same way. I think that's some amazing tech where you can build these cross-platform, right once run everywhere applications, but still get those light ups against all the different operating systems. Now next, 
I want to talk about Blazor Desktop. Actually, the real name for this is Maui Blazor. Um, what these are is these are ASP.NET Blazor applications that run on the native desktop. And you can see here that we support Windows and Mac uh, for .NET 6. Uh, uh, iOS and Android should work uh, with some limitations, but we're not going to call them done in .NET 6. Um, and this lets you take your Blazor UI components and use them across all your applications. Um, and so it's built on top of .NET MAUI. .NET MAUI is the host, it's the native host that we run the Blazor in. The way we, the way we do this is you have a .NET MAUI application and inside of it, inside of the XAML file, you're going to point to a Blazor web view. Uh, and you'll get to give us the project, your Blazor project, and we'll map the Blazor project directly into the native application. Um, and you can also mix a, a, a mix of native controls, web controls together in the same application. But more importantly, well, why put Blazor on the desktop? Well, if you put Blazor on the desktop, it has access to the file system. For example, VS Code is an is a Electron application that does the same thing. It has access to all the hardware. And so there might be cases where your web app can't do as much as you want. We'll turn it into a desktop application that can do everything. And the cool thing is you can do all of this in .NET. Something else I should talk about when you see the, the demo in a second, uh, we're going to build the same weather application, this time using Blazor uh, in, a, in a .NET MAUI app. Um, you might ask the question, well, aren't Electron apps really heavy and expensive? And the answer is these are not going to be that same way. The native WinUI application used about 80 megs of RAM. Blazor makes it easy to build rich, modern web UI. Here's our weather app, implemented as a web app using just HTML, CSS, and .NET. The web app has a nice responsive layout, so it looks good on mobile devices as well as desktop screens. We can see the current weather and local weather forecasts. We can also check out the weather from other locations. Here's the weather in South Korea. Here we can also change the settings of the app to switch from imperial units to metric units and it automatically gets applied to the entire application. Now all of the client side interactivity in this app is implemented using reusable Blazor components that work in any modern web browser using just the open web. The app calls our Azure hosted minimal weather API to get all of its weather data. By pairing Blazor with an ASP.NET Core server, you can build full stack web apps with just.net. Our weather app can still use some improvements. The list of weather stations on the right hand side looks a bit plain. In .NET 6, we can quickly make changes to our ASP.NET Core and Blazor apps using .NET Hot Reload. Here's the component that displays each weather station. As you can see right now, it's got some simple markup. Let's update the styles for this stack box class. Save that. It gets automatically applied. It looks nice now. Let's also add some markup here in order to better lay out the text and maybe add an icon. Save that. With .NET Hot Reload, our changes get applied to the running app without losing any app state. Blazor makes building web apps with .NET fast and fun but sometimes you need more than what the web platform offers. By combining Blazor with .NET MAUI, you can reuse your existing web UI logic and web development skills to build cross-platform native apps that can take advantage of the underlying platform. .NET MAUI comes with a built-in Blazor web view control that you can use to add existing Blazor components to any .NET MAUI app. This means we can take our Blazor components from our weather app and embed them into the .NET MAUI app without having to change anything. Here's our weather app running on as a native desktop app on Windows. 
It looks the same and has exactly the same functionality using the same Blazor.NET code. Blazor components hosted in .NET MAUI run directly in the .NET process. This means they run fast and have full access to the native capabilities of the device through the .NET platform. For example, we can reuse the same system tray integration that you saw previously and trigger native platform notifications. Because this Blazor app is running inside a .NET MAUI app, it can run on other platforms too. Let's switch over to my Mac to see how a Blazor desktop app can run cross-platform. All right, here is our Blazor weather app running as a native Mac app. As you can see, it's got the same look and feel. It's got the same functionality. If we check out the weather in South Korea, we can do that. There it is, and it looks and feels the same because it's the same code that we ran in the Windows app and also on the web. The app also has native integration, so it can show the little .NET bot up in the menu. We can click him and trigger a native notification. By building our app as a Blazor hybrid app with .NET, MAUI, we get the best of .NET, the best of the web, and the best of the native platform. So, I mean, this really excites me. Whether you're a web developer or a native control developer, you can build your applications on all the platforms with .NET, with .NET MAUI. Super excited about this. Now, you know, we've talked about some cool stuff, some minimal APIs, some .NET MAUI, some .NET MAUI with Blazor, but you know, you've already heard me talk about performance many times. .NET's got amazing performance, but one area we've not kept up with the, the, the rest of the crowds with is Interloop. And as I mentioned before, Interloop is the time for you to iterate, uh, to make a change and see it happen in the application. So we want to make that much faster in .NET 6. You can see, just from a build time perspective over here, you can see that building some Blazor apps and some MVC apps, uh, you can see these bars are way faster than they actually were in .NET 5. So we've improved build performance across the board. But hot reload means we don't even have to stop the application. We can take the changes you make in the editor and inject them live into your running application without losing state or any of these types of things. Um, you don't have to restart the application. Just make your change, watch it happen live in the application. Um, so, um, it, it, I, I just can't say this enough. We, I'm going to get to the demo as fast as I can because um, it's just so good. This is going to ship. Um, 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 so, a couple things here is you don't even have to change the file if you don't want to. You don't have to save the file. You can just inject the change. Um, we want to change that workflow. Um, today, maybe you always F5. Well, what if you just control F5? used hot reload, and then decided to attach the debugger after the fact. We make that simple for you. Um, and that's our goal. And uh, this is an evolution of edit and continue. Uh, we're going to take that edit and continue code that we have as well and go make it work with a variety of the new C-sharp and F-sharp and VB language constructs that we have. And all this is going to ship in .NET 6. Um, and here's a demo of this. It's going to be the weather app again, but we're going to make a lot of changes. We're going to add code. Uh, we're going to change code. We're going to add, do all kinds of stuff, and we never had to restart the application one time. For this demo, I have two apps to show you. First, let's start with the WPF app running on the right-hand side. This is a .NET 6 app called Boyd's, a game of life simulator, and you can see many shapes moving around. With .NET Hot Reload, we can now change the game logic while the app is running. To do that, we're going to press this brand new button. Now let's go ahead and make a change to the app and see how it works. I didn't build the app, so I'm not sure what changes to make, but let's go ahead and change speed limit. That seemed like it's going to do something. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. How about we add 10 to it? Now I'm going to apply the change, and as you can see, the behavior of the game is changing right away. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to make a different change. I'm going to make a change to the percentage to move towards home. Not quite sure what that's going to do. Let me just add 0.1 to that. And again, I'm going to apply the changes. And now you see a dramatic change in the app without having to restart it. While it's fun to show you an app like this, I now want to go back to our weather app and show you some edits that should feel like real world situations. Let's switch over to our weather app.
Here's the weather app you've seen in the other demos. As you know, this is a .NET MAUI desktop application, and here too we can apply code changes while the app is running. So first I'm going to look at the wind indicator. I expected some simulation code to have been added to make the indicator move. Let's go, and see, go ahead and see what happened. I'm going to go look at the code and find there's a to-do here. Instead of stopping the application, I'm just going to go ahead and add the code that I would have expected to be here. I'm going to add a get direction which gives me some random directions. I'm going to change it so it applies the direction icon and I'm going to apply those changes. The indicator starts to move. For favorites, I'm going to go ahead and click that button. And it seems like something is missing here as well. So let's go look at the view model. Well, I have some properties here, but it seems like I have no logic to load the data. Let's make a change that's needed. Now I could have typed this, but just to save us some time, I'm going to paste the code in. It should have been here. And you can see we have a constructor, an async method, a private method. All of this can be applied to the running app by hitting the apply code changes. Switching back, I can go ahead and switch to the home screen, switch back to favorites, and now I see the data. But I see one last bug. It's only loading Redmond. Hmm. Let's go take a look. Ah, uh, yes, it would be easy to miss. It should be an I instead of zero. I'm gonna apply those code changes and navigate back and forth. There we go. And now we get all the data we expect. Now with this app, it easily could take 15 to 20 seconds to restart the application. And it's a small demo app. But with Hot Reload, we were able to make all these changes without having to restart the app a single time. Imagine how much time it will save you. As I said, probably one of the most exciting features that we have in .NET today is going to be this hot, re hot reload thing. Um, and so um, I'm happy to announce that .NET 6 Preview 4 is available now. You can go out and grab it right now. It's going to have uh, the .NET MAUI stuff we showed. It's going to have the uh, .NET uh, MAUI with Blazor that we showed, the minimal web APIs, and some of the hot reload tech. Uh, look for the preview of Visual Studio 2022. It should be coming out any day or be available when this conference actually happens. Um, and it's going to be the first Visual Studio that can do most of this tech that you saw in the demos today. Um, and so it should be at any time now. Grab a preview of that as well and uh, let us know what you can do. We'd love to hear. Um, also, ML.net. I mentioned it early in the tech, uh, in the, when, we, when we started talking about how it's this library that we found inside of Microsoft and we've productized and open source and all that kind of stuff. We have a ton of cool improvements to ML.NET as well uh, that are coming in the .NET 6 wave. Uh, primarily, we've added a bunch of more platforms to it. So it now runs on ARM um, and it runs on the uh, M1 chip. Uh, this means you can now run it in all those places that we showed earlier on the Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Uh, something else is there's a tool. If you look at the, the screen here, uh, we're showing something called Model Builder. And it's a, it's a tool we built into Visual Studio. And what you can do is give us some data, tell us what you want to predict, um, and we will basically build the model for you, train the model for you, and write the code. Now what's new here is, it used to be that was a one-time thing. You'd go through it, and if you had to go through it again, you had to like nuke everything and start over again. It's now re-entrant. You can go back in and train some more, change some of the change change the the, the algorithm to something else. Uh, this is powered by something called AutoML as well, which means you don't have to have all the knowledge to figure out which algorithms are the best. We'll use some of our AI tech to guess the right algorithm for you. And so, uh, super excited about this as well. And then finally, I know I'm at your conference, uh, but I have to say that. You know, we're going to ship the next version of .NET, uh, .NET 6, this November. It's going to be November 9th. Um, and every time we ship a .NET, we have our own virtual conference. Um, and this year, it'll be from the 9th to the 11th. It'll be half Microsoft speakers, half community speakers. And it's going to teach you all the new stuff uh, that you can build and how to build it using .NET 6. With that, takeaways. Um, number one, thank you. Uh, number two, Go download the Preview 4, and even more so, look for the Visual Studio 2022 
uh, preview that's going to come out as it's a great way uh, to get started with all the tech that I showed you today. Um, and with that, I want to say thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of, of .NET uh, 2021. Um, and I cannot wait to get back to Spain next year and see you folks in person. Thanks.